Hello and welcome guys and in this tutorial video we're going to be looking at the hack the box machine called Craft. Um, apologies if you hear me snotting my nose, I've got a bit of a cold but um, I still have to go ahead and do this video. So I actually quite enjoy this um, box based on the realisticness or the um, the very real nature of the configuration of this of this box and I'm just going to show you how I solved it. So first and first we do nmap-sc, sv, and the IP address of craft is 11010101010.110. So I've already done this initial scan to save time. So if we do cat scan, we see straight away we've got uh, SSH on port 22. We also got um, an Nginx server running on port 443 appears to have a certificate and also we could see from the certificate common name craft.atb and that just appears to be the services running on this box so my initial talk was right let's have a look at the um, the nginx service running on the web server so i'm just going to do https and do 10 10 10 or 110 um, fresh in the box and then we see we've got a web say, page that says about craft talks about um, developing a public rest API as well as a brew submission process but for now check out the API so I clicked on the API here nothing happens but we can see straight away we got the domain name changed to api.crab.atb so what I did next was to um, edit the host file so slash etc slash host and just put in the IP address 10 10 10 .110. and I do first of all do craft.atb which is the domain name we found initially from the scan and then going straight away to put in api.craft.atb so I'm just going to save that so when we refresh this now, we see we have access to the API and we get a lot of um, HTTP methods that can be used, so get, put, delete, and all that kind of stuff. So if we go back to the initial page, I did a um, view page source. Looking through here, we can see api.craft.atb as well, and also we see another one called gogs.craft.atb. So I'm just going to go straight away and edit the host file again and put in that um, domain name. So cogs.craft.atb, save the file, try to open this up. And here it appears to be a uh, running on gogs which is a sort of um, a repository similar to a git repository click on explore we look at some of the repository here and the interesting thing we can see here we've got six commits your branches and also we've got issues so I had a look at some of the files there's a test script here and from here we could see a request to to log in and we see some headers, the content type, and also a token, and some other stuff within the um, within the file. So going back, um, craft API. We see a database folder. We see DB test as well, which shows a connection using Python, MySQL to connect and also be able to run some commands. So the next thing I did was to go back to the um, API. And try to do a put request. So the put updates a brew or post request creates a new brew. So I clicked on this, uh, try it out. And then started up burp suit.
start burp. Go on to Foxy Proxy. Make sure our proxy intercept is on. Go on here and just execute the command. Let's do that again. So burp intercepts, go to proxy, we can see the request, send to repeater, intercept off, click on go. And then we see invalid token or no token found. So what I did was to go back here and see uh, create an authentication token provide, provided valid username and password. So let's click on this. Just gonna turn off burp suit. And if you do get request, execute we get a response saying forbidden invalid token however if we look closely we can see he's doing a call command post request however there is no parameter for the um, for the token so going back to the repository going back to the files going back to home explore users I had a look at some of the users and I came across a user called Dinesh. I had a look at his public activity and I'm able to see, first of all, if we go back to repositories, go to the issues, we see here the user Dinesh um, opens up um, a thread regarding bogus ABV values. So he's saying here it's possible to add bogus ABV values to the database, for instance, a brew with 15.0 ABV, can, can we add a check to make sure the ABV is sane before writing to database? So can do this, uh, can you do this yourself and commit it to test later from another user? And then here I say sure. And then here he appears to say he's fixed it. So what I did here was to just copy this header, copy this header, I'm um, going to burp headers, and add the other here. And then we have to generate a token. So going back to the repository, let's have a look at this commit. We can actually see here the change he said he made. And having a look at this, we can see a dangerous function, the eval function is what has been passed. So the evil function compares the ABV value if it's greater than one and returns that the he returns a message saying the ABV must be a decimal value less than 1.0, else create the brew and also return uh, with um, the status 201. So what I did next was to go back to the files. If we have a look at the test, test.py, we can actually see the user here um, generating a token send it as request to, to generate a token. However, um, it has to authenticate with the login, so with the username and password. So going back here, we can have a look at this user called Dinesh, test.py, trying to see if we can find some credentials, app.py, tests, I think we've seen this before, craft or API, uh, have a look at the API, Authentication, endpoints, auth.py. It's nothing here. Trying to see if we can find some credentials. Have a look at the brew. Passes.py. It's nothing here. So go back to the issues. Or oh, going back to files, home, explore, users. Go back to the user, Dinesh public activity we can actually see some of the things he's done so we're going to have a look at here maybe we can find some credentials this appears to be the commit so here within the add test script we could see him actually providing a username and password for his test script so what i did here was to view file raw copy this and 
So nano test.py, paste this in, save, and just execute this file to see what happens. So test.py, and we can see straight away he's testing the ABV value. So if it creates a bogus ABV brew, it brings up an error, but if the value is less than one, then it actually um, creates the brew. So if we go back to this file, you can see here he's actually authenticating with a username and password. So what I did here was to edit this file and just say print token. So we can actually see the token that is created, test of script. And here is the token. So I'm just gonna send this token, copy this token out, go back to Burp Suit, edit this here, put in the token. And now when we click on go, we get a message and uh, unhandled exception occurred. So if you remember the ABV value is what is actually being passed to the eval function. So what we can do here is to exploit this um, eval string by trying to get a reverse shell. So what I did here was to use the Python import, bracket open OS, Close the bracket, dot p open, open this up, do netcat and see um, if config turn zero, get my IP address, open up a netcat listener, nvlp 9001. I'm just gonna make this always on top. Then paste in my IP address, netcat, port 9001-e slash bin sh. Close this, close the parentheses, and I think that should do, send a go. Nothing happens. I think the import here is missing the underscore. Click on go again. And here we can see we got a shell on the box. So if I do ID, it says I'm root. If I do uname dash A, we can see we, if this was actually the craft box, which is a Linux craft or whatever the name of the box is, but we can see here it's giving us a sort of a random number indicating probably we might be in um, a container. So PWD shows us we in this directory. So if I go to CD slash home, List dash LA, nothing there. LS, LS dash LA, nothing in the home directory. So we can go to slash CD root, LS dash LA, it's nothing here. So we just go to slash, see if we, and you can see here the dash Docker environment tells us we actually in um, a Docker environment. So I went back to the initial directory, which was the opt slash app directory. And just have a look around uh, what's going on. So here, uh, some of these files, probably some of some other users, but there were some default files that I found, which was testdb.py and try to run that Python script. So dbtest.py. And straight away we can see here it's get the um it's like it's querying the database and getting the values in in the, in a certain database if we remember if we go back to the repository we actually found this db test in the in the files this one here which is actually sending a query to select id brew name whatever it is so my idea was to try to see exactly if this file is the same, so test.py. And we can see here is this the same file and it's actually sent a query. So what I did was to copy out this file. Just come in here, paste it in. And I'm just gonna edit this file. So I'm gonna put in echo. Um, Put in a there, 
and then change this command to say show databases and then rather than fetching just one we can use the fetch all function so it fetches everything close the parentheses or the code pipe this and I'll call this um, test me dot pi copy these out going back to our shell just gonna paste this here so if we do a list now we should have our test me dot pi so if we do Python test me dot pi we can see straight away it executes the SQL query and tells us we've got two databases one called craft and another one called schema so what I did straight away was to say right probably we're gonna have some juicy stuff in this database so we could edit our our initial file to do that so show databases rather than doing show databases we're gonna say use craft as a database execute SQL create another query probably there's a better way to do this but this is how I managed to do this and then I'm going to say um, show tables show tables okay so here we can see SQL this execute SQL use that and then um, SQL I'm just going to call it SQL 1 and I'm going to say result equals crucial fetch or print results so he's going to execute this query he's going to execute this query and then the result is going to print it out to us so let's see how this works so we can see the list of tables paste this here run the script again so python test me dot pi we get nothing in response so let's edit this so SQL show tables crucial execute SQL so we need to have this as well so I'm gonna say cursor execute SQL 1 because it's gonna run this query and then it's gonna execute this SQL query so this is the parameter is gonna take and then SQL 1 is gonna take SQL 1 parameter to execute and then it's gonna print the results so let's try this again paste then do python test.py no results okay so we know the database is craft so I'm just gonna get rid of this line so use craft SQL 1 equals this and execute this hopefully we should get some results paste that in ls we have our script so we're gonna say python test me dot pi and we can see now we have tables in craft we have brew and we also have a table called user so I'm thinking right we should be able to dump the uh, whatever data is here and hopefully some credentials so what I'm gonna do here is use craft uh, not show tables so I'm gonna say select all from user so that's gonna be the query so we're gonna use the database and then uh, execute this so let's go back in here paste that in python test me dot pi and you can see straight away we've been able to dump credentials so copy all of these out I'm gonna open up uh, another notepad and I'm gonna paste the credentials in there so we've got the credentials so my initial thought was maybe SSH might work but SSH wasn't the way to go so I went back to the uh, repository and I could see a sign in so after trying it all out I found out the user Guilfoil actually uses the same password on this repository so we use the user Guilfoil 
paste in the password, sign in, and we logged in. So you can see here, this is the user. Uh, we go back to ex explore, and we can see he's got a private um, repository here. So I'm clicking on this. We see SSH. We see the private key. Click on that. I'm just going to copy out the SSH key. And go back in here. And do nano ssh.key paste this here then shmode 600 on ssh.key then I'm going to use this to log in so ssh.key dash I think we need to have a dash i of this and the user guild foil at 10 10 10 1 0 the access for the password we assume this is the same password it's asking us for paste it in click on enter and we're logged in so we can see straight away we go user logged in the box and straight away we can see user.txt so if we do wc-c user.txt we've got the user flag now there were some things that apparently was kind of weird how do we escalate to root now we see some other files here called vault token so i'm just going to have a look at that we see some sort of token and if we actually go back to the repository We can have a look at we see a folder called vault and i had a look at some of the files here so i had a look at the docker file and i'm able to see that this vault is actually a kind of a program which was downloaded from releases uh https releases hashcop.com so i went up to this and able to see hashcop and after a lot of searching, I actually bookmarked the, to read more about the documentation. And I found out that the vault he, uh, allows you to create a one-time SSH password that you can use to log in. So how it works is a user requests an SSH one-time password from vault. The one-time password is returned to the user and then the user uses the one-time password to authenticate via SSH on the on on the on the um, on the box. So this is what I'm going to be attempting to do. So what I did was to have a look at some other files. Or going back here, how do you actually request this? So it talks about some prerequisites. It talks about install SSH, set up the SSH keys engine, and then. Um, if we go back requesting an OTP so these are the steps you're going to do so we're gonna start from step one to see exactly so I believe vault SSH has already been installed then the next thing I did was to set up the secrets engine by enabling this so let's run this command so we paste this here vault secret and there we get an error saying URL this doesn't exist so I'm going to go back to my um, box, nano nano slash etc slash host, and just include this um, domain as well. So we've got vault dot craft think. craft to ATB save the file let's try to open this and see what happens open link we don't get anything nothing happens so the next thing was to go back here and create it so it says next create a role so this creates an OTP key role with Ubuntu as the default username 
for which a credential will be generated. So let's copy this command to our notepad and create an OTP for the user root. So root, copy this, go back here, run this command, and it says data just have to written to SSH role, OTP role. So we have an OTP role. And then the next thing is to enable SSH circuit engine SS mount endpoints. So we could copy this. However, if you look at this, it's actually a token. I think we believe we found the token already. And then it says um, type SSH sysmount this. So this is the command we're going to be using next. So we copy this out and make some changes. So going back here, paste this in. So the token, I believe we had the token before. Just going to cut this token again. So cut the token. Get the token. Copy out the token. Replace this here with the token. Replace this with the IP address of um, vault.craft.atb. Let's make this call request. Let's clear screen. Paste that in. And it says errors existing mounting SSH. So I just ignored that. Then I went ahead to the final step to say request an OTP. So the command to do this requires this. So I'm just going to copy this. Go back in here. Paste this in. The remote IP address is 10.10.10.110 to request an OTP and see if this is going to work. Paste that here. And straight away, we, we get the OTP for the user root. So this appears to be the OTP key that we'll be using to log in. If we go back here, it says example once well, this is generated for the user root the key value is the otp to use during ssh authentication so i'm just going to go back in here and do an ssh root at 10 10 10 .110. click on enter it's access for a password we paste in the one-time password Click on enter and we're root. So cd slash root ls dash la. We can see here we've got the root flag root dot txt. And that's it. So the OTP is actually val uh, the duration is 768 hours. So it means this OTP is going to work for a long time. It doesn't appear to be an OTP that expires probably in a minute or less than that. However, I think I really enjoyed this box because it requires digging deep into most of these files, even though it's quite straightforward and appears simple, trying to understand exactly what is going on, looking for credentials, exploring the uh, Git repository, trying to understand the vulnerabilities in the code and finding credentials to log in. So, we're roots on the box, as you can see. ID and root on craft. So I hope you enjoyed this box. I hope you enjoyed and uh, found this um, interesting. And hopefully I should see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.